All right, hello and welcome back to Tom Q's Tech Tips. And this is take five <laughs> of my attempt to do a quick little recording on the poor man's pan tilt zoom. And uh, by poor, I'm talking about under $250. I think my setup cost me about $210 for what you're about to see. Um, I purchased all of these with my own money, so um, and none of the links below are affiliate links. So anyway, this is just my opinion. And um, so I've got three little things here uh, that have the necessary ingredients for panning and tilting and zooming. And uh, so first of all, I'm gonna just talk about the Sony CX380. The first ingredient that you would need for pan tilt, pan, tilt and zoom is a zoom lens. So this is, this is a 1080p camera. It's not 4K, but it is one of the early 1080p's. I think they made this around 2013 or 2014. Uh, it has a 30x optical zoom, and it's a it's a decent lens. Um, so anyway, um, number one requirement was zoom. Number two requirement was the ability to somehow remotely control the zoom. And uh, this is one of the few cameras um, that I could find in this price range. And I can't, I think I, I bought this off of eBay for about 110. And I've seen it go from anywhere from 99 to 150. But it has this interesting little port. It is not mini USB, it is not micro USB. It's, um, I think Sony calls it a multi micro USB port and uh, it allows you to do a number of things but the the primary thing I wanted to do is zoom and uh, so also in this little door is the uh, where the power cord goes I'll be plugging that in in a minute um, there were other models that have this little port that were in s similar price ranges uh, on eBay but this was the uh, the least expensive one that had that and microphone in so um so anyway that the 30x zoom this port which we're going to use with this little set right here and the the microphone in which don't necessarily have to have that but i may be maybe uh uh using that at least wanted the option to have it so let me go ahead and close that up for a sec um, so this little guy, I've actually used this in a conference already. I, last August, um, I used this, and so this is the the receiver. The transmitter is the the remote. So you're doing the the controlling, and this transmits its signal to this wirelessly. Both of these pieces run on two triple A's. So you've got the transmitter on two triple A's, and um, the receiver on two triple A's. The transmitter of these batteries last a long time, days and days. This little guy, if you forget to turn it off, um, you're going to probably go through your batteries in 24 hours. Um, if you turn it off after your show, I think I might have gone through two sets of batteries in my three, three to four day conference last year. Um, but I did remember to turn this off after every, after every event. So this cable right here, which does have mini USB on one end, but that funny, it is not micro USB. It's this multi micro USB port. Uh, this is the one that goes into the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into the receiver. And so this is, your, the, uh, this cable is about 12 inches long. So this is gonna have to be about, um, 12 inches from the camera and it does have a cold shoe mount but there is no cold shoe adapter on this on the Sony camera so I usually link this together and kind of loop it around the power cord or the or the handle of the Sony so uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and plug in one end to the to the Sony and it's a it's a fairly long connector and it actually puts up a little resistance um, quite a bit of resistance and I wasn't sure how hard to push but it wasn't working for me so I pressed a little bit harder 
and it does actually make a little snap there. So there will be a, it doesn't go all the way in, but there is a distinct first and second click. So um, we're going to get that going, and then we're going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and flip this around so you can see something on the screen. And so this guy right here, you can see what this does. It can also start and stop recording. There's zoom out, there's zoom in. You can turn on grid lines if you want, which I definitely do not want grid lines. And then you can actually power the camera. So the, the only, besides the battery issue where this little guy runs through batteries fairly quickly, turning this on is the other drawback. And take four of this, I it took me about six tries to get this to work. So most of the time this will work on the second or third try. So I'm going to go ahead and to turn it on, you don't just flip this. You actually hold this button down and then turn on. At least that's that's what I read on in the instructions. So I've been kind of following that. And so I'm going to go ahead and press power. Uh, the power function works almost always the very first time you, you do this. But we want more than power. Um, and it's going to prove me wrong there. We want it to also zoom. And you know what? I'm, I'm very happy to actually have zoom. There's a slow zoom. If you, um, if you just press gently, there's a slow zoom. And then if you press hard, there's a fast zoom. So let's just uh, zoom in and zoom out as fast as we can. So this little guy I'm happy with. I've, I've used this in a, in a live situation already and I'm comfortable with what it does. Uh, shortly after last year's conference, I decided I would really like to add panning and tilting. So I went, did some searching. By the way, this, this feels fairly cheap. It's a very light plastic. There's nothing heavy about it, but it does not feel as cheap as this guy right here. And uh, so this is the panning and tilting mechanism, and they're they're pretty much admitting to you that this is not a very hearty mechanism. Please don't rotate the pan and tilt by hand, only, re only using its remote control, which also runs on a, it's not a AAA battery, and it's actually under a screw here. So um, this is one of those little stubby batteries that looks like a AA, but it's about half, half size. Um, Anyway, so this guy uh, has, a, has an antenna that can get you extra range. I have not had to have that open. I've never turned this one off because, and it's, I haven't, uh, haven't had any issues with that. So, um, so anyway, this guy right here is currently, I'm running it in battery mode. Um, it charges with a micro USB port and you can turn it on and off here. Uh, it also has USB out. So you could be charging uh, whatever camera you're running this on. I've actually seen some USB uh, power cables for this guy, and, but they're all super long, so I haven't decided. I have deci just haven't gone out and picked one of those up. But I'm not sure, and I'm not sure if it's enough power to. This is enough power to run this guy. But anyway, got this in the on position, and I'm going to go ahead and screw in my. Uh, camera here and I think you can see my little setup here I'm, right now I'm using to film this I'm using the uh, iPhone 10s Max along with the little Rode Wireless Go 2 and uh, so let's just pop this back here and first of all let's get this oh you know what else we want to do let's move this out of the way we want to do uh, a complete pan and uh, complete panning. Let's move it up a little bit. And uh, we'll go ahead while I'm thinking about it and plug this in to the, um, I think that's a micro HDMI over there. And uh, so one thing that I did a lot of searching on before I purchased this camera, and that was 
does this camera have clean HDMI out? Which is, an, which is critical for what we're doing here. And I could not find that in any of Sony's documentation. Um, and if you start poking through these menus, you will not find a place that tells you that you're turning off the on-screen controls. But if you turn on basically the autofocus and the auto exposure, I found that you will not see controls on the screen. And occasionally, just occasionally, I've seen the face tracking show up on my screen, uh, on my HDMI output. Um, but going into this menu and then leaving it again gets rid of that issue. So um, just a, that's just a little tip if anybody takes tries this out. So anyway, let's go ahead and move this box out of the way a little bit, and let's do um, let's do a complete uh, pan. So uh, let's uh, just tilt this just a little bit more. So I'm gonna. Uh, one thing, thing that's a little tricky is to go right, you press the left button, and to go left, you press the right button. So let's go left all the way. This is the speed that it uh, that it goes. It does not have a fast or slow speed like the zoom does, and it does have a little pause there when you first get going. Let's go all the way around to the other side. So in its documentation somewhere, it'll tell you what the, what the complete range is in degrees, but it is over 100, 180. And uh, as you, you can actually run both buttons at the same time. So you could theoretically, if you can, uh, if you can, if you're coordinated enough, you could do that. And let's go up and grab my face there. All right. And then, of course, we've got the, the zooming here. So you could theoretically also be zooming. My plan, you can see that some of the jerkiness there. My plan is to not do any, definitely not do any panning and tilting while this camera is live. So we'll switch to another camera. This is not my primary camera. This is kind of a secondary camera, but we will not be and you can see some of the jerky jerkiness there again. Maybe it's catching on some of the cables that I've got plugged in. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So um, anyway, as long as 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 long as you're good with that, if you're good with doing the panning and the tilting while this is not live, I think you're going to be okay. Let's go all the way up and. Sometimes it actually will kind of do a very fast drop when it gets to a cert certain, it's, I think it has to do with the load. But uh, without the power cord plugged in, right now I'm not using, there we go, there was a little, there was a little drop. So got to be a little careful on the tilting um, with, it, with it doing that little extra drop. And yep. so not really seeing it there, but. Um, there it goes, right there. Okay, so um, if you're content with doing off-camera panning and tilting, I, this is going to work for me. I just want to be able to be sitting at my control station with the ATEM and my computer monitoring the sound, monitoring comments on YouTube, and be able to control the panning and the tilting of this camera without getting up and walking 15 20 feet away, distracting the audience, etc. So, um, so anyway, um, was there anything? Oh yeah, I'm just gonna uh, let me just I'm gonna switch over and show you the quality of this camera. So I think there we go. I'm gonna. All right. So this camera likes a lot of light. Um, let's see if I can I zoom out anymore. Nope but we'll go ahead and do a, a slow zoom in. And by the way, you can see what I'm using here. I'm using an iPhone XS Max um, with the Rode Wireless Go 2. And um, for HDMI out, I'm using um, 
Where's my second copy of this? All right, so let's uh, let's hold this up. This is this is actually an Apple iPhone dock, which on the back end of it, and I st still actually have an al alarm cable hooked up to it, but on the back it's got lightning and uh, and a headphone jack. And believe it or not, you can plug um, the Apple HDMI digital AV adapter. So you can you can actually plug the digital AV adapters lightning port into this dock and get your HDMI out and your power into the dock. And then you can actually run a um, an eighth inch jack into the headphone jack of this of this dock. So that's what you're looking at right here. I've got the TRS running into the T T R R S tip ring ring sleeve of of the of the dock. So um, so anyway, that's how that's how I was filming this today. Um, so anyway, let's just do some zooming in. This is the slow zoom. I'll do a slow zoom in and then a quick zoom out. And you can see it's keeping its focus pretty well. And all right, so. And I think I just lost focus. So we'll zoom, zoom out a little bit and then we'll do a fast zoom out. So I'm super happy with um, the quality of the camera. It does need a lot of light, so if you're in a low light situation, it's going to get grainy pretty fast. But with decent light, the picture is going to be good. Uh, 1080p, which is all the A10 can handle anyway. So anyway, um, I think that's I think that's all I want to talk about. Let's uh, let's switch back and go ahead and and dismiss you guys but um it's again it's the yt uh, yt 260 for panning and tilting and the srf 2w for zooming and it does need a compatible camera like the sony cx 380 so anyway thanks for tuning in if you've got questions or comments or if you can if you've got another good pan tilt zoom for less than 250 dollars let me know in the comments thanks and have a good day bye bye